from Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. Ladder 3's second round matchup features number four qualifier Jeff Surratt from Danvers, Massachusetts, taking on our third seed, Aaron St. Cyr from Haverhill, Massachusetts, next, as Al Johnson presents Candle Pins for Cancer, brought to you by Ali Chan. to another episode of Candlepin Bowling, brought to you by Candlepins for Cancer. Last week, we had a fantastic finish. Jeff Surrett edging out Amanda Carroll, 360 to 347. This week, we have a new, another newcomer, Aaron St. Cyr. Uh, tell us a little bit about him. Uh, Aaron St. Cyr, out of Haverhill, Mass. Um, he's a 116 average bowler, and this is uh, another first time bowler for a, a brand new TV show. And uh, he's an up and coming bowler, and he's got a lot a lot going forward for him. I mean, his high triples of 432, but he just threw his first 400 just a few months ago. So we're really looking forward to seeing him perform. So let's welcome up our bowlers. So I'll start off here with Jeff. Jeff, last week, awesome match with Amanda Carroll. Um, came down to the wire. Uh, you battled a couple of rough starts. I actually threw all three strings and bounced back on, in all three and uh, needed every pin. Uh, what were your thoughts in that match? Really had to bear down, take a little extra second, because uh, the, the ball wasn't going where I wanted it to in the beginning of the strings, and that wasn't very good. So, uh, you know, had to make it a little bit better. But I got Aaron, and uh, man, he throws a good ball, so be a good match. All right, so uh, trying to take out uh, two newcomers in a row. Jeremy, let's, uh, let's say what's up with Aaron. So your first time on television, you have to bowl Jeff, who's no stranger to these lights. Well, what, uh, what, what are your thoughts going into this match? Um, just got to stay focused, stay on number one, and uh, never count myself out. Fight to the end. It's going to be another good match. You're throwing a great ball right now. Uh, let's, get, let's get to the match. Let's get it going. Jeff Surrett, leading off, leading off on lane 33. Taking on Aaron St. Cyr in his TV debut. Looking for the quick start here. Leaves the eight pin, nine pin. It's the nine pin, Rich. Well, you know, I messed that up last time, uh, last match a couple times in the Surrett and Carroll match. Let's see if we can figure out our pin placements here. Plays the wood. Surrett plays the wood. And I don't blame him. I mean, hey, if you make your mind up, that's that's the most important part on yeah, a shot like make, that. Make, you make, make your sure mind you, up before you... You have to be convinced that you're going to do what you're about to do. Because if you do and then you miss it, you, eh, it's not the best look in the world. Jeff on the one three with a nice seven fill on it. Triangle on the left, the two, four, and five. Lays and it he right makes in it. There. It's a beautiful Starts start. Off. Starts off two marks in a row. As we get our first look at Aaron St. Cyr. Ah, we got a straggler. And the pin rolls back about 40 feet. Alfie taking care of business right there. Alfie generally does take care of business. So we get our first look at Aaron St. Cyr from Haverhill, Massachusetts. Like you said, he was averaging 116. High single of 160, high triple 432, high five 686. 
and also someone brand new to the TV series under any lights whatsoever. So looking forward to seeing what he can put forward for us. That is first ball on television. Not a bad ball, but leaves something less than desirable. Not, not a popular one, really. Three on the right, two on the left. He's going to give it a run. Hey. It's an it? absolute fantastic bid right there. And he'll start off with a nine box. He's been bowling for 19 years, but I mean, if you look at him, he only looks about 19 years old. Well, a lot of Candlepin bowlers tend to start pretty early, and I think Aaron may have been one of them for sure. Just off the head pin, it's three. It's always those first two boxes. You know, somebody new to the television uh, environment. That's the first two boxes. You got to get out of your get out of your system. And just hitting a few object pins tends to help. You, you can get the first couple out of the way. That helps. But when your opponent has a couple marks, and your opponent's a guy like Jeff Surratt, that makes the first two boxes really. <laughs> Really difficult to go overcome, so it'll just be 17 for St. Cyr. Surratt working on a mark, looking to get the bonus money going right away. Get $25 for three marks in a row. Just off the headpin leaves the one, the seven, the eight, and the 10. And that's all he's gonna leave is that piece of wood trickles into the left channel. We're gonna have to make it clean. Leaves a seven and the ten. If uh, one of our contestants bowl, bowls a four hundred, you get a hundred dollars for that. All kinds of bonus money to be had. You could have twenty-five dollars in a row for three marks in a row, and for each uh, sequential mark after that is another twenty-five dollars. And if you throw three strikes in a row, that's five hundred big ones right in your pocket. And Jeff with the follow the bouncing ball into the 1-3. I thought this was bowling, Mark. Pass, go, Aaron. Come on, buddy. Results oriented with that one. Aaron looking to break through. He is a uh, teen center director at the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, half Worcester on the left side. Just outside the object, leaves the one and the seven. Nice opportunity to have a 10 box here and see if he can't get himself going. Yeah, a good 10 box. Some of his hobbies are basketball as well as bowling. Right on the head pin leaves the triangle. Leaves the ball nicely on the one three there. It's a more promising ball from him. Oh, he, wow, how does he leave the four? You, you can't place that ball any better. I'm confused by that one, Jeremy. I don't know how the four stand. And that is well, incredibly unlucky. Jeff looking to uh, fill his strike. Chance for a double, but leaves the six, the seven, and the ten. A couple pieces of wood there. At this point, I think you're just kind of looking for count here. Yeah, you just want the nine. Really not much you can do with that wood. Maybe try to fly something. Very difficult to send anything over toward the, uh, the seven-pin area. 
but a professional 10. It's really well done from Jeff. Yeah, 71 after five boxes for Jeff as he moves to lane 34. As Jeff is causing disaster on lane 34, has to re-rack. Jeff is from Danvers, Danvers, Massachusetts, averaging 120, high single of 204, high triple 483. We mentioned this uh, last week, 802 high five. It's the eight that throws me off. As far as I'm- That's too many pins. As far as I know, there's only three bowlers that I can think of that have eight, an 800 five series. Well, let's see, are we playing trivia here? So, I mean, obviously Jeff's got one. Um, Alfie? No, well, no, the, well, the world, well, the world record is 841. Well, that's Mike Sargent. Correct. Okay. Is it Atkins? Nope. Huh. I mean, if, the, if okay. Well, you know what, you know what? Don't even give the answer until the end of the show. Put it in the comments section. Who's the third that has the, the, the 800? The, you're telling me that Surrett has one? Mike Sargent has one. As Jeff makes the five pin on the cut side, he would have taken the six and the 10 with it. Who was the third person to have an 800 series in candle pin bowling? That's a really good one. I, I'm not sure that I know the answer. You will see, well, but I've you have to watch the whole show. I've got a couple of good ones. Go a couple of good guesses, but. Saints here are off to the Worcester side on the right. And he oh, makes a bid. What a time to break the ice for Aaron St. Cyr. His first television spare shot. picks up the Worcester. Outside on the Worcester side. Beautiful I still, shot. I still think that's the only way to hit that shot. Very difficult to, t uh, to carry it on the four horsemen inside. You're correct. And will he put 10 on it? He's going to put nine on it anyhow. Up the wood took a well, turn. Well, is it going to trip it in the channel? Ooh, it poked it, but it didn't take it. And it stays on. That's good. So after six, Jeff is at 81 plus his fill. Aaron St. Cyr, 66 plus is Phil, as we uh, get a word from our sponsors, and we will come back with the conclusion of string number one. <laughs> Jeff steps up to lane 33, Phil and a mark. This is the early 15 pin lead. On the head pin. Boy, what a beautiful ball. The six and the nine are wobbling. Oof. Piece of wood, I'm almost tempted to go outside the six here. You're speaking my language, Jeremy. He's got a little bit of space there in between the pins. If he goes outside the six, he may flip the wood over to the seven. That, oh, he didn't clip the wood. Everything but the piece of wood. I think that's... that's and that'll be just a nine. That was exactly what he was trying to do, trying to place the ball in between the six and just clip that cap on the way by. Really unlucky break for such a good first ball. We'll put Jeff at 97 through seven. We should give, should give our hosts at Lido Lanes a, uh, a big thank you for hosting us. Absolutely, that's a huge thank you to Alexis and Matt and all the staff at Lido Lanes for having us. Lita has 36 lanes of candle pin bowling. They've got pool tables, arcade games, great food, drinks at the Kegler's Den. Right next door, we have Lita's Lighthouse with 12 more lanes of glow bowling and plenty of parking here. You can visit them today at 340 Amherst Street, Nashua, New Hampshire, or online at LitaLanes.com. Jeff with a fantastic spare bid there. Picks up the 10 box, we'll have 107 through eight boxes. Aaron looking for his shot at bonus money here. And an opportunity to bowl his way right back into the match as well after the relatively cold start. A couple of splits early. Chance for $25 and 
Cut the match close. Stuff the headpin, leaves the four horsemen plus the nine. Work to do. Just outside the head pin. Leaves the one, the seven, and the nine. Try to find the head pin. See if he can't find a rhythm for the next box, and that's really well done. That's that's a good ball. That's the one he's got to remember for this ball coming in here in the eighth. Down 18 through the completed frames. Opposite just the 10 box from Surrett, though. Back on the front one. Leaves the three, the six. Oh, and he punches right through the front one, which unfortunately too easy to do. That's yeah, such a tough break. You put the ball right where you want to, and you only take the front one. Comes back with a nine box, 88 through eight. Uh, through completed boxes, Jeff has a 19 pin lead right now. Jeff, back on the head pin. Is the four gonna fall? It, oh, it's gonna. I guess so, it's gonna oh, take the two. Big break for Jeff here as he stares at the 10 pin. Yeah, he's all over that. <laughs> Jeff, as we had mentioned, is no stranger to these lights. Uh, I, he didn't even list how many TV appearances he has, is just because there's so many of them. Uh, you can watch all his shows actually on Alley Chat, who also is the major reason why this show we're doing right here is possible. Oh, absolutely. Uh, absolutely free to subscribe to Alley Chat through YouTube. You can find all sorts of classic matches. Ooh. Ooh. And the bank is open on Sunday for Jeff Surratt. <laughs> Jeff Surratt is doing Jeff Surratt type things right now. Chance for bonus money with a strike. Nine, Phil, a 144 for a string. Here. Great first ball, leaves the three, the six, the 10. Opportunity for a mark. Trying to keep it close. A couple of marks here, we'll keep it within the 20s anyhow. Here in a three game match. Yeah, that's a good shot. It. Big shot for Aaron. Really a clutch shot after a, a couple of marks in the face like that. That's how you face the adversity. It's really well done from St. Cyr. It's looking for at least an eight or a nine fill here to help cut into that deficit. You throw a strike here, all of a sudden the momentum swings your way. All of a sudden you're gaining pins in the last two boxes. Who knows? On the head pin. The 10 pin does not want to go. moved off its spot. There might be a quarter of that pin in the channel. That weeble wobbled. Going to have to be inch perfect on this one, and he, he is. Gets that it. is absolutely clutch bowling from Aaron St. Cyr. How to answer the call. 108, plus this fill here. <laughs> Off the head pin. Oh, but wait a second, Anna. It's going to be a seven fill. And I think he's okay with that one. Oh, you, you're darn right he is there, Jeremy. That's 
That's a good trip coming home. So we have first string, we have Jeff Surrett at 144, Aaron St. Cyr 124, a 20 pin lead for Jeff Surrett as we pause for our sponsors and we will begin the second string when we come back. Aaron will start off on lane 33. He's down 20 pins, but he had two big marks in the ninth and the 10th box to cut into the 40 pin lead uh, deficit he was down. It could very easily be just about 40, as you rightly said, Jeremy. Instead, it's 20 because of uh, the two timely marks from Aaron St. Cyr, and he's gonna need another one uh, here to start off. It's gonna be difficult with the seven and the nine. Piece of wood up high. Couple, Let's eh, see what he does here. Couple pieces of wood. I like the one out front. Just because I'm weird. Gives it a bid. Leaves the seven pin. And the nine box as he moves over to lane 34. Still looking to crack through on any uh, major tournament wins uh, for Aaron. But he does say one of his favorite bowling memories is bowling Pro Series doubles with Evan Riva. Wow, oh, that five pin just turned into the five and three quarters. Well, I don't think it hurts in this situation. Just find a three pin. Oh, I'll somehow still married, manage uh, kind of cherry through everything. Kind of bulldoze that. Yeah, a respectful 19 through two boxes. It's a good 19. He hit the head pin twice. Jeff looking to of keep weird going. Leaves. Yeah, definitely a couple of weird leaves. So Jeff up 20, heading into second string here. Off the head pin leaves the one, the eight, the nine. There was a piece of wood, but it looks like to be rolling back. Squeaks by the head pin. And a nine box. Back on the front one. Got the two, the five, and the eight. Piece of wood in between. Interesting to see how that reacts. And see if he gets to the eight. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough one. I think he had to kind of really hit the two square in the jaw. It's a, a very difficult shot. So it'll just be 10 for Jeff. So both bowlers all square through 19 and 20 will still be the deficit here for Aaron St. Cyr. As we mentioned that obviously this production wouldn't be possible without without Ali Chat. The show itself would not be possible without Alfie Johnson and his charity, Candlepins for Cancer. Uh, Candlepins for Cancer, we can't say enough about what Alfie Johnson has done with this charity. Uh, it supports bowlers and their family members who are fighting cancer with money to help pay for treatments and bills that might be associated with their afflictions. And since our inception here, we've the charity has given away over $12,000 uh, to those in need. And that number is growing every day. Um, you can give donations through candlepinsforcancer.com electronically. Uh, we'll be soon accepting those as well. Um, for the time being, if you want to donate, please send a check to 467 High Street, number 8, Hampton, New Hampshire, 03842. And uh, if you see any of those uh, little wood candle pins, uh, in your uh, candle pin center, 
feel free to throw a couple dollars in there as well. And all that money goes back uh, to the bowlers, from the bowlers, and that's what literally makes this show today. So we appreciate you tuning in and any kind of donations that you may want to want to give. And uh, we'll be happy to give them all back within the Candlepin family. And a spare for Aaron in the fourth. I've, I've always said that the Candlepin community has always been like a family. You know, we like to take care of our own. So I mean, if you know somebody, you know, all everything is, is anonymous. If you know somebody that's struggling and need, needs help, definitely reach out. Reach out to us. We we will uh, we'll put you in touch with Alfie Johnson, and we'll uh, if a anybody in, in the Candlepin community, if you're struggling with anything involving your cancer uh, issues in terms of bills or anything like that, let us know. If we can help you out, we will, and that's what uh, this is all about. Jeff with a great bid on the outside of the head pin, leaves the seven, picks up the ten box, twenty nine through three. Opposite Aaron St. Cyr Spare. Still a 20 pin match. Opposite the spare. And he'll have a difficult time of making a spare of his own here with the three, four, six, and ten. No wood to speak of anywhere. Punches through the three pin. And here's a spot for the young man, St. Cyr, to, to come through. This is uh, the biggest ball of the match. Here we are approaching about the halfway point. He's shown so far to be cool, calm, and collected. Let's see what he's got on this ball here. Looks like a great one going down. It sure is. Getting better all the time. The it's, six falls. It's going to wind up being an eight fill. He's got the three and the ten. He's got some, definitely some help in between. I'd say it's a lot of help. If he can get anywhere near that three pin, I think he's okay. And it'll jet by to the right. Still a good count. All important ten box and... They say always easier on the third ball. Uh, he's looking at 57 at the halfway point of the string. Another nice ball on the 1-3. Nothing to really show for it. You have the, the four, the eight, and the seven. Yikes. Piece of wood in front of the two there, the two pins. Another piece of wood that's out a little bit that I don't. He's going to go low up top. I mean, a little lower may have done it. The ball kind of jumped over and took the eight. That may have been the only other way it went. That was a very difficult shot either way for him. But again, with the good 10, whenever you're dealing with a match that's within 20 pins, 10 pins, you want to make sure that you get your 10s because. It could be 19 or 9 pins, which changes things quickly. And so Jeff do comes back so with do a strike. Those. Jeff comes back with a strike. We should note, note that so far this string, Aaron St. Cyr has only left one pin on the deck through six boxes. You know, that's when those, those close matches you know, can be determined one way or the other. Jeff looking for the double. Oh, that's a good ball for it. Get it in there nicely. He's got the 10 pin. May have to go all the way by the wood. Hard to tell. Yeah, that's 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 not my favorite placement for a piece of dead wood. Uh, I don't think it is for anyone really, but <laughs> the, the ball jumps over. He's at 48 plus nine. The 10 box. We have 66 after six boxes. A one pin lead this string for Aaron St. Cyr. As we will uh, hear a word from our sponsors, we will come back with the conclusion of our game number two. Aaron St. Cyr. 
on lane 33. Finds the head pin. You know, it, wow, by all, visual, it's not a fantastic lead, but that, that these goes. Are, they're pretty when it goes. All he has to do is make the, the two pinner true, I think. Catches the cap. Easier said than done. Trouble is, now he's looking at, at best an eight box, really. So he moves over to lane 34. Oh, and a beautiful ball. He's laying it right in there in the pocket, and about time he gets rewarded. One, three, flush, five pin last to go. Jeff back on the front one, leaves the four, the seven, the 10. There was a piece of wood that rolled off the deck. That squeaks by, he'll be looking to at least get a nine out of this. He's opposite Aaron Strike coming up. So he does get the nine and that pushes the lead back to 20. Now, if you were to ask Jeff Surratt who his favorite bowler is, he would tell you Craig Holbrook. Really? That's a good one. Who, I believe, we all just learned, has thrown over a 1,400 series. Oh, I believe that. I, I saw that uh, I, I saw that clip. Anybody that doubts that, I think, I think just has to look at the, the bowler. Like, I mean, are you, like, really? I'd say a 1,000 might be a little low. <laughs> I'm, I'm being serious. Jeff looking for a big out here. Tough seven box. I mean, he's had seasons where he averaged at 400. So you figure that's 15 for every league he bowled in, right? Yep. So if he bowled five nights a week, that's 75 a year. And that's just in leagues, never mind anything else that he's bowling in. So it's 12 years it would take him for, uh, no, I think it's easily more than 1,000 minutes to be realistic with you. Aaron, Aaron St. Cyr oh! looking for a double. Wow, throws the, throws a great ball. I, I wow, the four, eight, nine, the, ten. What is he going to do here? Does he try the wood? I don't oh, see. I'm, he's going to play the pins. Oh, he plays the it. pins. See, I was going to say it. I was going to say it. You have to play Are that shot serious? on the outside. Are you serious? Plays the four pin. Like dominoes, the eight, nine, ten. Will he put ten on he it? Of course he does. Twenty-five dollars in bonus money. Seems like it should be more than that. One twenty-five and two balls. Lays another one in there. Boy, is he in the zone now? I was about to say, I think, I think he's found it. For twenty-five more. He'll take the he'll twenty-four. Take, he'll take tw twenty-four. He'll take the twenty. Uh, the, he'll take the nineteen. Yeah. That's and it'll what... take 134. <laughs> Fantastic finish from Aaron St. Cyr. I, I still can't get over that shot. So that puts Surrett in a pickle now. That throws a good first he, ball. He needs two marks just to remain even now. Nearly makes the first one. As he leaves the six. 
And the nine box puts him at 91 through nine. Really needs to come with come up with something to finish this string. Again, these big pins that we've been discussing. One here, one there. Another nice ball on the one two for Jeff. Triangle on the right, the three, five, and six. Not a must make yet, but uh, would be really nice to have one going in for the third. Just outside of his object. Needs nine for the hundred. And that's what we'll get. A fantastic finish by Aaron St. Cyr, the second string, 134 to 100. Uh, we have 258 to 244, a 14-pin total lead for Aaron going into the third string. Uh, we're going to pause to hear from our sponsors, and we'll be back for the third string. <laughs> Jeff starts off on lane 33. Finds himself now down 14 pins. Throws a great first ball, leaves the four pin. Piece of wood out in front. Out in front and has a little space that mm. makes it a little tricky. And a great shot comes off the wall. A good cover. I think Jeff knows that he has to start early. But well, you figure 14 pins, that's that's two well-filled marks. You have to start somewhere. And one out of one is a pretty good place to start. Puts eight on it. Another good ball. He's got the four and the nine. The wood again out in front. A little more space this time. He's got to make sure to get all the way back to that nine pin. Nicely and done. Makes it. Nicely done. Neither one of those were gimmies. They may have looked like it, but well, he makes them look like it, I should say. <laughs> uh, speaking so. of our host, Lita Lanes, uh, we have a big, uh, the Easter Classic is back. The 20 stringer, the Easter Classic, 20 strings, a grueling test. Uh, we'll be back again this year on April 17th. Lita Lanes in Nashville, New Hampshire. You can sign up now on their website at LitaLanes.com, or you can call the lanes at 603-899, or excuse me, 603-889-4884. I believe they also accept walk-ins that day, so if you do decide you want to bowl on April 17th, I'm sure they'd be able to accommodate you here at Lita. It's up eight boxes start for Aaron. Still throwing a great first ball, though. He has been very consistently on the head pin, that's for sure. I think we jinxed him. That's the announcer's curse, Jeremy. Not an unmakeable shot. No, nope, these are the ones that go, and they, they're pretty when they do. Wow, everything but the 10. Going to clean this up. Nicely and done. Jeff will step on to lane 33, looking to add to his bonus money. Well, so far, he is at $25 in bonus money for winning the first string. Good first ball, leaves a check mark on the right side. Three, five, six, and 10. Going for three in a row here. Little thin, nearly came back to poke the five. So it will be an open for Jeff. And he picks the 10 box. So 
that's 44 for Surratt through three. That goes half Worcester on the right side. Uh, this third string is brought to you ad-free by Alley Chat. Uh, please visit their YouTube channel, click on the little bell, subscribe, like. There's countless hours of archived old Channel 5 videos, uh, Friday Night Pro League matches, anywhere, anything Candlepin video that is available is available on their on their YouTube channel. And we have to thank Frank DeLuca and Brendan O'Dowd for, for keeping that going. Some of the stuff you can find there is amazing. You know, you find your favorite bowlers that you watch growing up on Channel 5 or, you know, Channel 50 or any of your shows that you may have liked. You can find all sorts of cool stuff, all kinds of gems. St. Cyr, wait a second with this one. And now he's got the cluster on the left, the two, four, five, seven, and eight. Piece of wood that he's gonna try to sweep, I'm sure. See how low he gets on it. Up and a high great on shot. it, a beautiful shot. Crammed it right in there, that's a great shot from Aaron St. Cyr. And a timely one as well against the two opens from Surratt. What a ball. Yeah, the wood goes over, takes out the seven pin, leaves the five. Piece of wood out front. I mean, it's, it's a ways out front. Should be fine. Anywhere on the meat of the pin should be okay, and it is. It does. Another two marks in a row for, for Aaron. 57 plus his fill. Alfie's got to go over, do some house cleaning. So Surrett starts with two marks against St. Cyr's two opens. St. Cyr backs himself up with two marks against Jeff's two opens. All of a sudden, the match down to eight pins. Jeff off the head pin, gets a break. Sizable break too, it looked like it could have been a half Worcester. Now he's got the one, six, eight, and 10. Lays the head pin full and only just takes two out of it. He'll come back with a nine box. While we're talking about big tournaments, we also want to uh, shout out Outrun the Bear will be in Ryan at Ryan Family Amusements in Millis Saturday, April 21st. Uh, this is the 80% uh, handicap Outrun the Bear tournament. Guaranteed first place money is $2,000. And this is another tournament that is is also a grind. Uh, you, if you're gonna try to outrun that bear, you're gonna have to outrun that bear for about 10 to 12 strings, depending on uh, how big the field is. So uh, be prepared for a day, that's for sure. And so anyone who has 30 or more strings in uh, for their league by April 30th is able to enter. There is a wait list uh, right now, I believe. I mean, that's, that, that's how popular this tournament has gotten. Uh, that's amazing, glad to hear, and uh, credit to Danny Finn and uh, the crew over at Ryan Family Amusements for building that tournament from scratch. And, he, uh, he, will, he will tell you awesome his wife tournament. Kate does all the work though. Which may be true. <laughs> Aaron with a great first ball. But credit to both Danny and Kate for uh, putting together a great tournament at a great house. We always enjoy going there as well. 100%. It's an interesting leave here. The six and the seven. I don't think the wood does very much. We're gonna find out. Oh, okay. Not sure if he was trying to catch a cap there. I, it, it may be, it, it seemed it. The nine box. It'll put him at 64. Gives him a 16 pin lead through the match and he's opposite the 10 box from Surratt. So a mark here would be really crucial. It's off the head pin again. Gets three with his first ball. 
Again, not an unmakeable shot. Like these, this shot does go. Hoping to get at least nine out of this. It's going to be a tough one. That looks like he dropped it a little bit. And he'll have an eight box. He has the 14 pin lead. Four boxes to go. Surrett chasing 14. Half Worcester on the right side. I'm not sure what the most frustrating lead for a Candlepin bowler would be. Would it be the half Worcester? Or would it be the spread eagle? Well, they're equally frustrating, I think. The, the half Worcester is frustrating because you missed your object. And the half or the uh, the spread eagle is frustrating because you hit your object. Right. And you have you know. I'd rather shoot at the half Worcester. So of the Jeff, two. Jeff with the ten. I can tell you right now though, Jeff would rather shoot at neither. He needs a mark right here in a big way. Down 14 pins, he's gonna need to find two marks at least out of these last three boxes. And he goes half Worcester on the left side this time. Look up, looking to clean up here. Uh, very tough six box. Mark, a couple marks here, and I think Aaron has an opportunity to put Jeff away. Great first ball. Oh, oh, wait a second. Wait a second. Ooh. Oh, nearly took the 10. Nice piece of wood out front of the 10. Just a little housekeeping there. Nothing but something to do. He's bowled really well all match. Very good. Uh, 124 the first string, 134 the second string. Very can, consistently on the head pin. If he can throw a 144, that'll put him over 400. Oh, and that's, that's still in range. And then I open my mouth. Well, that's kind of what we're here for, isn't it? <laughs> Oh, he makes a great bid at that. But just a reminder, if one of our bowls does hit 400, it is an extra $100 in their pocket. And a nine box, a 95 through eight. So it's a 21 pin lead going into the last two. So Jeff's gonna need two marks regardless of what happens here. On the head pin, at least a five, the seven, the eight. He can catch the five pin and that piece of wood. That's what I think. I, I think through the holes, the only way you can do it, unless he goes to the right side of the five and carries them all. Right there. Oh, no oh, kidding. Wow. wow. Yeah, I don't think he could have placed it any better. No, I don't think so either. Uh, 97 through nine. Seven box to finish. We'll finish 104, uh, 348. So it looks like Aaron will defeat Jeff Surratt. 
It's just a determination of what the final score will be. Oh, he gives him a bid. And a nice 10 bucks. A first time under the lights. He uh, he he, sh he showed up to bowl. Impressive. He, very impressive. impressive. It, it's it's not an easy thing to do. He'll pick up the ten. One fifteen. Three seventy three. Uh, to 348, 25 pin victory for Aaron St. Cyr in his television debut. Uh, just, just, just some great bowling. Uh, we'll be back in a few moments and we will talk to the bowlers. We are, we are back here at Lido Lanes after Aaron St. Cyr defeats Jeff Surrett. 373 to 348, his first time on television. Not an easy thing to do. He came out with some big marks. I, I, I mean, what's the mindset? You go in, you're bowling Jeff Sered, one of the best this game has had this, this generation. You almost have nothing to lose. Uh, are, are you asking me? Yeah. What are you asking me for? I mean, are you kidding me? No, that's absolutely right. Um, again, with another, another first time bowler on the show, on, on any show of any kind, bowled awesome. Um, really, what else can you say uh, to two great bowlers today? Let's have them both come up and a uh, nice round of applause for our bowlers here today. <laughs> so we're, we're going to start here with the Surrett clan. And, and uh, uh, first of all, Bowen, here's a check for $400 uh, for, your, uh, for your troubles. Uh, thanks for coming out and uh, supporting the show and uh, introduce us to uh, the clan today. And uh, again, great bowling. Oh, thank you, yeah, Aaron, bowled awesome. Probably could have hit 400 if he didn't get hosed on a few shots, but we got daughter Carly, who's 17. I actually had her on these pair lanes on an old show when she was six days old. So it's pretty cool to have her back. And we got my son Tommy here. You guys have anything to say today? <laughs> I think everyone did great today. Thanks, Carly. All right, and uh, thanks, Jeff. I uh, appreciate you uh, coming out, and I hope to see you again on the show. Awesome. Aaron, congratulations on your win. Uh, you made some incredible shots. I, I, I don't even remember. Was it the, the four, four, five, eight, nine? Uh, just, did you, when did you find you finally found a groove? I mean, you, you, were, you were hitting the head pin consistently throughout the second string. Did it finally, did the nerves finally go away? Uh, yeah, after the first couple boxes, after I was sitting with no marks, after four boxes, I think I had to kind of kick it into gear. I kind of shook off the nerves and just focused on the bowling and hitting the head pin. So get my brakes, chase them when you can. Yeah, I mean, you can't leave the door open for Jeff. Uh, great bowling today. Uh, $75 in bonus money, 373. Uh, next week, you have Dean Sullivan, another tough opponent. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll just see how it goes. Thank you very much. Congratulations.